South Africa's capital city on the brink of collapse. We ask the MMC for community safety, Grandi Tennyson of the Freedom Front Plus. Welcome, Mr. Tennyson. The opportunity as well. How many days of strike action has the city experienced? It started on the 28th of uh, June, uh, July, sorry, this year. So it's going, we're going into the third month at the moment. Um, but it's uh, not a full, full blown strike, although um, the, we, I'll, I will put it this way some of the people are on slow strike, others are working as per normal, and some are actually working more than what they would usually be working to make service delivery carry on to the best of our ability. What criminal activity and violence have been associated with the strike? Well, there's been quite a lot of criminal activity. Um, We've had from attempted murder, a person was shot. Uh, We've had various vehicles that were set alight. Um, We've had multiple cases of intimidation. We've had uh, multiple cases of arson taking place. So it's far beyond a normal labor protest. It's actually become a violent, orchestrated criminal uh, onslaught against the city and the people of the city, as well as co-workers. Have there been any arrests? There were initially some arrests. Um, There's about eight or nine arrests, uh, which happened right in the beginning of the strike. Um, We've had a bit of a battle with South African police services for affecting more arrests. Um, but I think we are now on the point where we have handed it over to a specialized unit um, from the province's side, and we're anticipating some serious arrests, big arrests, um, the coming week. Um, we have been in a position where we actually gathered sufficient information which we have passed on to uh, crime intelligence as well as the specialized unit who will be involved. Um, so uh, this is actually very, very uh, good evidence that we've provided to them. And we're expecting some arrests, yes. And the nature of the arrest will be high-ranking uh, union officials that uh, will be involved. And until now, the union has denied being involved in the strike. They have said the union is not striking. So um, if we do link these people to the strike, um, that will say a lot for the union. How many workers have been fired as a result of taking part in this unprotected strike? It's about 130-odd people who've already been fired. Um, And there's more underway. It's a process that's taking place. People are given a letter first to say there's an intention to to dismiss, and then reasons are supposed to be obtained. Remember, this is summary dismissals, so it's not the normal disciplinary process that is being followed because we have a court order that uh, um, has actually declared the strike as illegal, and uh, therefore we can do summary dismissals when we link people to the strike. What are the demands? of those workers right now? Well, first of all, they are demanding the salary increase. Remember uh, in 2020, I think it was, that they had a multi-year agreement um, for salary increases. But due to the fact that the city is in the financial distress that we are in, um, we cannot afford to pay them for the strike. Therefore, I mean, for the salary increases, therefore... Um, we need to, we, we, in the beginning of this year, when we had the new budget, I'm talking the financial year, um, at the end of May, um, all parties, with exception maybe of the EFF, one or two smaller parties, actually agreed to the budget where we budgeted for a 0% increase due to our financial uh, distress. We also went uh, according to the rules of engagement and we actually applied for um, to be uh, not to, to not to have to pay the strike at this stage so um, we are following the the necessary labor rules and 
Um, it went to the bargaining council. The bargaining council made a, a very strange ruling. They ruled that uh, that the city is in financial distress, but we should still pay the increase of 4.5%. Um, but we've taken that on review to the Labour Court, and so there is still a process going on. Now, the, the legal process is that it will go to Labour Court, and most probably it's the same Labour Court who have granted us the interdict. It was initially a temporary interdict, and it's now become a permanent interdict against uh, the strikers. So um, it's going to the same, same courts, and uh, we are quite of the opinion that um, it is we, we, we have a good case to make out, and we also have the back of of uh, National Treasur Treasury who confirmed our financial status is of such a nature that we just cannot afford to pay the increases at this stage. It will have an impact of about 600 million rand on the budget of the city. And there is no way the city can source uh, this funding somewhere else? Um, because of the fact that we had an adverse audit and our credit uh, ratings, the city cannot borrow money. But it would also not be wise to borrow money for a salary increase. Um, we have been instructed by National Treasury to actually um, to de uh, uh, decrease our expenditure by almost 30%, which is 3 billion rare, we, which we have done. Um, and therefore, we could not afford um, to pay the increases. And that's one of the reasons why we didn't. Um, we, we've applied for exemption from the uh, bargaining counts. Um, so there's no external funding available for us. We have an unfunded budget. That means that the city has to provide its own income to fund our budget on both capital and operating expenses. Now, fed up ratepayers are threatening a rates boycott. Uh, what kind of impact is that going to have on the city's budget? I think... Um, there are people who are threatening. Um, they may not know the complete uh, circumstances surrounding this, uh, but overall, in general, most of the people are very understanding and they do appreciate. And I've had multiple calls from residents in the city to say, guys, we, we support you. We know it's difficult times, but we do understand your predicament that you are in. Remember, we took over in 2021, and after a administration uh, period by the ANC that was enforced illegally on the city, and it took it had a devastating effect on our finances, and we just haven't been in a position to to recover as yet. So we need to have time, and we have also have a a um, budget uh, funding. Uh, plan in place and a recovery plan in place to to get to um, a point where we can afford to to pay our people uh, increases. But at the moment, the the bad thing would be if we if we do um, adhere to the demands of the union, it may then result in further uh, service delivery um, impact on the service delivery. It may also result on uh, having to uh, retrench laborers because it's just impossible to fund that, that from our own sources. At the moment. So what is the level of service delivery in Tuani at the moment? Uh, we are getting many complaints uh, from people. I think the biggest thing in um, that has been, uh, been affected is the uh, waste removal. Um, we are trying to normalize as soon as possible Remember, one of the things that has an impact on the service delivery are these uh, criminal activities where they are intimidating co-workers uh, who are fearing for their lives. Um, we have now also, uh, as far as possible, we are providing from the Metro Police's side escorts, but I have also engaged with roughly about 45 um, private security companies who are assisting us. So most of the service delivery is carrying on. It's slower. It, I must admit it's slower. Um, but because we need to provide uh, escorts to the working teams. Um, but we are still, we are getting there slowly but surely. Uh, most of uh, the areas that are affected was um, 
parts of the uh, central uh, parts of the city, uh, the old eastern po portion of the city, right in the northern uh, suburbs, uh, Soshangubi, those areas, but that's been brought under control. Um, and then also in the east of Pretoria, they have targeted us. We must remember that these uh, strikers uh, are actually trying to get the community to force the city to do something that we just cannot afford. And that's why they are intimidating workers who are willing to work. We have had the, in, um, it, it does appear that some of the workers are coming back slowly but surely. But yeah, there's a vigilante group. I am of the opinion it's about between 50 and 100 people who are actually actively um, acting against the city crim on a criminal level, and they are intimidating the good employees. Um, and there are many of them that are really trying their best to do service delivery, and we ask the patience of our residents out there. What have been the biggest challenges of the coalition government running Tswane? Well... <laughs> Um, initially, as I said right in the beginning, all the parties and, and specifically the coalition parties agreed to the fact that when we did the budget that it would be a zero increase. So we've had some um, members of, and it's not all of them, but some of the members of Action SA who wanted us to uh, engage on uh, discussions with the, with the unions. And we've never said we will not discuss anything with the unions. All we said is we will discuss, uh, have discussions with the unions from the point where we say we just don't have the funds. Um, we are trying our best uh, to get the city's financial situation stabilized. Um, and some of our coalition partners, and specifically, actually it's not, uh, it's me certain members of Action SA who wanted us to to do that, but they have been informed and they've been given the necessary information. So it seems as that problem has been addressed. The other one was uh, one of the members of action uh, of uh, ACDP, who was also uh, against our, us um, continuing with the, to hold out on the strike. Um, but uh, that seems to have been addressed as well. We did engage with national leadership to assist in this regard. What role has the economic freedom fighters played in all this? Let me start by saying they uh, are playing just a disruptive role. Um, they are actually also getting involved in criminal activities. Um, recently, we had two council meetings that they disrupted. Um, on the end, I think it was on the 12th of September, we had a council meeting. Um, on, no. On the 31st of August, we were supposed to have a council meeting, which was totally disrupted by the EFF. They were protesting, waving placards in the council meeting. The council meeting had to be adjourned. Then on the 12th of September, they arranged a uh, march to Tswane House. At the same time that the meeting took place, they insisted on the mayor taking a memorandum. And then the crowds started getting under the control and under the motivation of the EFF and specifically their caucus leader. They started with criminal activities. They threw stones. They damaged the Tony house. Various uh, windows were broken. Uh, people were assaulted. People were intimidated. And uh, to, uh, on top of the, the cherry on top was that the EFF caucus leader I have him on video where he was throwing stones at the South African police services as well as at the building. So these guys are only there to disrupt. Uh, they are participating in criminal activities. We had them um, also in the past week at the University of Pretoria, this allowing uh, white students to attend and to get onto campus. Um, if there's ever been racial uh, 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 racial Racialism, it's from the EFF side. They are against anything that's white. They are calling uh, us names in council meetings. So um, they are definitely not there to serve the community. They are there to disrupt and to fill up the, and uh, just cause problems in, in the city. When is the case going before the Labour Court again? When do you see this resolved? Um, well... 
I'm not exactly sure of the date um, when this is going to happen. We are waiting for a date. Um, so it will be hopefully in the next week or two um, that it will go to Labour Court. And then if it is uh, in our favour, obviously, um, then we are anticipating the strike to end. There may be some upheavals from some of the elements within the city. But um, I think people are starting to realize this is a reality. Um, if we need to, to um, pay these uh, increases, then obviously we will have to um, take the money from elsewhere. And there's only two places where we can take it. We can reduce service delivery, and the community will not allow us to do that. Or the alternative is we will have to start looking at retrenching officials. Now, on top of the strike woes, the situation with water supply in Twani has been dire for a long time now. We often get reports from people saying they go for lengthy periods without any water. What is at the root cause of this? Well, I think it's much wider than just Twani. It's uh, a problem from Rand Water, who's providing the bulk of our water supply to the city. Um, they do not have the capacity to extract the water from the Ball Dam uh, um, regions and pump it to uh, the local municipalities. It's not only Twani. I'm sure you've heard in Joburg they've had even greater problems than what we have had, and also in Ikoruleni. So uh, it seems as if they are following the same route that ESCOM has, um, that we may end up with water uh, shedding instead of just load shedding if we are dependent. So we are trying everything in our best uh, uh, to um, see what we can do from our own resources. And that's something that we are targeting um, to s start becoming less reliant on rand water. And now, some people are calling us saying the city is falling. South Africa's capital city, city is on the brink of collapse. How true is that? Well, if we are allowed to to work on our recovery plan and our funding uh, plan, then I see that we can survive. If we are going to be forced into something that we do not want to do, there is a chance that this is going to happen. But I think, uh, in general, let's be positive. Uh, we'll make things work. We're trying. We're working on a 24-7 basis. There are very good people involved. And luckily, uh, one of the things that's been lacking in the city for many months and actually many years um, is proper top management. Now, at the past meeting on Thursday, I think it was the last week Thursday, we appointed seven new senior managers. Um, and these people were looked for, I looked after just specifically fit for purpose. They've all got a good track record. We have vetted them all, and we have sent them for the necessary uh, evaluations, and all of them were found um, competent for the positions that they are going to occupy, of which two have already started the past Monday. Um, so I think with the top new top management in place, uh, our city manager is a very competent person, and then obviously with the support from the uh, mayoral committee um, will make things work. I'm quite positive about that. Thank you. That was Drandi Tienissen, the MMC for Community Safety in Tswane, speaking to Biz News. Thank you, sir. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>